so I'll just stop sharing my screen there and everyone will get going. Okay, so welcome to this evening's Fertility Network UK webinar for East and South East Asian Heritage Month 2024. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'd like to start by welcoming you all. This is, as I said, a East and South East Asian Heritage Month webinar event. And I'm Jenny Okonomensa. I'm the Ethnic Minorities Communities Project Worker at Fertility Network UK. And um, part of the work of Ethnic Minority Communities Project is to provide support, information and resources to people from minority communities that are aff affected by fertility issues. So you may have uh, come to a webinar before or this may be your, your first time. You're more than welcome and thank you for joining us. So as part of East and Southeast Asian Heritage Month, we want to raise awareness of traditional Chinese medicine, which comes from East and Southeast Asian communities. So in line with this year's theme, which is changing seasons, this year's East and Southeast Asian Heritage Month offers a reflection on the cyclic nature of life. And we have an amazing guest speaker today joining us, uh, Professor Qi from Asante Academy of Chinese Medicine. And he'll be talking about traditional approaches to supporting your fertility. So as I said earlier, the webinar is being recorded and it will be available on our website and via our YouTube channel within the next week or two. We're aware that not everyone can join us on the night. So please check uh, our website and the YouTube channel where you can view the webinar again. All of our webinars are free, but we are a small char charity and we do rely on donations. So if able to make a small donation to help us to put on these webinars we'll be really grateful you can text to donate by texting fnuk and the amount that you want to donate to 70085 so for a one-off donation of five pounds you can text fnuk 5 to 70085 or to donate three pounds you would text fnuk 3 to 70085 so thank you in advance to everyone who feels able to do this as it does make a real difference to us all. So without further ado, I'm delighted to introduce our guest speaker for, for tonight, Professor Song Qi, founder and principal of Asante Academy of Chinese Medicine, has practiced and taught traditional Chinese medicine worldwide for over 40 years. He started to learn his skills very early when he was 13, years old, apprenticed to three herbal masters in his own province, Hubei, China. He was medically qualified in both Chinese medicine and Western medicine in Canton University of Traditional Chinese Medicine in 1982. His clinical success as a leading consultant of traditional Chinese medicine in the UK since 1986 has been featured in The Observer, The Daily Mail, Financial Times and on the BBC, CNN, ITV, Channel 4 and many, many other broadcasting media throughout the world. He is twice listed in the Evening Standards Top 50 Health Practitioners and London's 100 Best Alternative Experts, respectively. He is simply brilliant. And that's a quote directly from the London Evening Standard on the 8th of May uh, 2000. So Professor Thong Ki has been successfully promoting and providing acupuncture services in the NHS in hospitals such as the Royal Free, Whittington and North Middlesex hospitals, working as an acupuncture consultant at the Royal Free Hospital. He has also been involved in research programmes in traditional Chinese medicine, in various London hospitals and was instrumental in setting up the BSc Honours and um, MSc courses in traditional Chinese medicine at um, Middlesex University. So there's an extensive, as you can see, uh, Professor Keith experience um, as a founder and associate Association of Traditional Chinese Medicine, um, the president of the British Society of Chinese Medicine, and the vice president of Pan European Federation of Tri Traditional Chinese Medicine Societies. He's actively involved with the UK. Department of Health in the process of statutory regulation of professional practice and he is a member of its regulating 
working group. So Professor Key is well known for treatment of skin disorders, allergies, diabetes, gynecological conditions, I'll say that properly, infertility, ep epilepsy, emotional disorders, and many, many others. He practices at Asante Academy and a number of other clinics in London. He also travels internationally to treat patients above all He's a very kind man and willing to help and give honest advice to people. So we're really delighted to have you join us today. And I will hand over to you, Professor Key. Thank you. Hello, everybody. And uh, thank you very much for your lovely introduction. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, I just want to say thank you for your coming for this webinar. In fact, this is my first time to do the webinar. Uh, I, of course, I am a teacher. I'm a professor teaching for more than forty years, and uh, uh, but I always do the face-to-face -face talk uh, teaching, but never do the webinar. But this is a new sort of technology. So, so when I got the invitation, I said, "Okay, I do my best. Uh, I, I do this. Hopefully." You can sort of uh, learn something today, and then maybe you know for you uh, understanding of Chinese medicine and how we treating the infertility, perhaps will be some help for you. So I'll try to my best. Now, and as I said, um, I've been uh, working as a doctor and a teacher for more than forty years, and just in London alone, I've been working here more than thirty eight years. So it's been a long time. And of course, before I came to London, I was a teacher in Chinese uh, medicine, medical university in Guangzhou, which is one of the top Chinese medical university uh, for a few years there. So, uh, so today uh, we are talking about uh, infertility uh, and how to treating infertility in Chinese medicine. Now, when we talk about infertility, perhaps I want to make a little thing clear. Number one, uh, we have to talk two sides because there's a male and a female sort of um, uh, size. There's female infertility, there's a male infertility. Because according to the latest lot of study, and um, there's about 25% of the women have a problem um, they cannot get conceived naturally, and uh, and then there's a similar kind of proportion of men as well. They have uh, twenty five percent of the men have a problem with the sperm, and uh, and they cannot sort of um uh sort of have this uh, ability to make their lady in uh, to get to get pregnant. So there's a two side story. So perhaps. Uh, let me just more focus on the female side. Uh, maybe that's what are people generally talking about. But, but as I said, I just don't want don't don't don't, don't want to forget. There's a male side. So uh, I will perhaps in the future we we'll talk about the male side. Now for the female side, infertility, and also want to get kind of sort of a, the um, the concept right. Now first of all, what, what is infertility? And just simply, of course, is people can't can't you know conceive a baby. That's just simple. But in fact, there's quite a few things I want to make sure people understand. You know, and uh, what we said normally about uh, infertility for 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 uh, for a lady is normally we say this woman, you know, and. Uh, in in the sort of a right age, let's say, sort of a young lady, and uh, uh, they've been living together, have a normal sex life with the with the partner, and uh, normally and uh, over, in theory, should be over two years without any any success any successful sort of um, fertility, even miscarriage or something like that. So. So this this is normally a two years in the old fashion. So people start to seek seeking and it's kind of sort of investigation or the treatment. So in other words, it's not just say, well, you know, you married 
uh, last month and or oh, three months ago. Had this three months, I'm no baby, so oh, I'm get a panic. So um, I would just for to go see doctor. So for for those people, just don't don't be, you know, too panic. Be patient. So I'll normally give you at least a year or maybe even two to try. So you probably will naturally conceive. So that's that's number one. So we say um, it's not simply say oh you you know you tried a few months and you got a panic. Now and also the infertility there's um uh, in fact there is um uh, two kind of fertility. It's like there's a one primary, you know, all secondary. So what that means is that it's like uh, primarily um, the uh, sort of primary sort of uh, infertility is talking about a lady never get pregnant before. And uh, so therefore, and uh, so that's one thing, doctor, we need to investigate a lot of things. And secondary infertility is it means people may have had children before or had pregnancy before, somehow terminated or or some by whatever means or reasons, so and uh, 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 not successful or, or successful, and now they want to a few years later they couldn't they could not do it again. So this is because secondary. So but anyway, so it doesn't matter how we uh, classify or what we call them, sort of a different infertility, but infertility for women basically there's two major issues. As we understand, or probably we should understand. Number one, of course, is we call it organic issues, means the organ, or is the mechanical issues, something wrong in the mechanics of the body. Say, for example, the fallopian tubes are blocked to both sides. So therefore, the sperm or the egg cannot passing through. So that's something quite often. So this means there are some so doctor that's why we'll, we'll, we'll check the people so they will give you some kind of sort of a test and then to tell you say your tubes are blocked or not blocked so it's, oh maybe something has let's say have a fibroids so some people have lots of quite big fibroids inside uterus so therefore they cannot uh so that you know there's no free space so in other words people can't get pregnant because the fibros. So this is all we call them mechanical issues. And um, of course, there's another issues of the of the uterus depends on uh, the, 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 the shape of the uterus, depends on how big, how, how small, and even even their sort of a, um, depends on the fall, falling frontwards or backwards. So there's all, all these things that have some kind of sort of a, a sort of uh, influence of ladies' fertility. So these things, obviously, uh, the hospital uh, doctor have now have a good scanning, you know, and from through the scan, they can pretty much tell whether you have this sort of mechanical problem or not. But there's a, but this is, in fact, it's not, it's not, it's not big issues. Um, but the big, big issues is really what's called a functional problem. So another big group, it's people who say without any reason. So in other words, many, many doctors had a checkup and um, and then they, and they, they did all the blood tests, scan, x-ray, or even put a camera, look at it inside the water, and they could not find anything too wrong. And uh, sometimes they, they call them unexplained, so the infertility, they can't explain, in other words. So what is the problem? And this is a big chunk of the people. Now, this is a, this is we. So what 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 do I want to say? I want to, you understand. There's a two kind of this infertility. If it's a mechanical ones, so say for example, if if people really really tubes are completely blocked for a long time, but of course that's different issue. That's we need to do something to open the blockage or do something. Um, but again, even so called blockage, I have a lay. I have a lot of women. Lady come to me. They've been told have a. The two tubes are blocked, but and then and then you know sometimes the blockage can be um, permanently blocked, or sometimes can be uh, not non-permanently blocked. What it means, like say for example, 
I tell people, for example, your nose, like nostrils, sometimes when you get cold flu, your nose are blocked, so you can't breathe in through. And then after a few days later or weeks later, and your nose just suddenly open, so you can breathe in through the nose. So, so therefore, some kind of blockage in the Philippine cube, in Chinese medicine, we think is what we call the dampness blocked, just like your nostril being blocked by mucus, by something. And uh, so that, that is still, I have help people, that still can be um, reopened um, by some kind of treatment. So uh, this is what we call uh, the kind of sort of, uh, uh, even the mechanical problem. And the, and the other mechanical problem, like for example, fibroids, and um, that's very difficult. If there's a huge, huge fibroids in the uh, uterus, so as Dr. Norman suggests, have operation. But there's another kind of sort of a, a mechanical issue is uh, endometriosis, because a lot of people, you know, have a, this diagnosis of endometriosis, it means the blood, some kind of sort of stuck in the system, causes lots of pain and thing. So, and that in Chinese medicine, although we said it's, a, it's a mechanical, but can be helped because this endometriosis, not only doctor can solve them by, you know, using operation, but we can also do, do medicine or acupuncture can dissolve them and not use the words dissolve them. In other words, to, to, to reduce those endometriosis. But anyway, so, and, um, and the, for the function one, and obviously, this is a big issue because a lot of women nowadays uh, star family uh, relatively late. Uh, as you know, so and t you, you may ask me, what is you know what what you know you know what do you mean by late? Well, obviously, you know, we are uh, uh, we 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 are natural animal in in in, in the way the human is it, a natural in the world. So it's like it's like all other animals. You can't have a baby. You can't have um, your your sort of kind of sort of uh, uh, your children or your baby uh, when you're very young or very very old. So you can your body can only can produce you know uh, offspring in a certain period of your of your life. So and this in Chinese medicine for women we have this simple saying. We say it's like we have seven. This this figure. So. We said, woman, the body every seven years make changes. So, like the first seven years, seven years old, so the body start to teething. So that's why you see the girls normally te teething early than boys. Boy, men's eight, so late. So second seven is fourteen. So that's time should start a puberty. But of course, nowadays, women start puberty, girls start puberty much earlier. I'll talk about that later, why. And then to the third, seven, 21, so the woman start to mature. So that's the best time to start have a baby from, from the 21 to 28 to 35. So this period of time is what we call the peak of the womanhood. So it's, 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 all, it's the best time to be mother. And then after that, so your body sort of uh, the, 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 the fertility ability become uh, going down. So to the seven, seven is called 49. So that's normally women start to menopause and, uh, and then, uh, or even some people uh, finish period around that time. Although nowadays people can use, you know, um, you know, hormone replacement treatment you know, and but that's not really natural. So we say naturally. So woman is around this time, you know, sort of a time have a have ability to have a baby. So the, so, so so the best time should be between twenty one to thirty five, or even even this is the best time. Of course, it's really late. It's okay, but it's still struggle. So nowadays, because the because the the social kind of sort of a thing changed compared with many years before. So women have the, you know, education, have the job, have the work. So normally many, many, many ladies, they don't even get married, you know, before 30 or even 35. So therefore, in other words, the start of thinking of a baby is pretty much quite late. So that's why, you know, naturally nowadays, many women, even, you know, 
no, nothing really wrong. They just can't get it. So this is a problem. Now, so what, what we can do then? So, and, um, and also, I just want to say, because infertility have another issue, is because of the nowadays, many girls, as I say, start period quite early. Normally, it should be 14 around that time, won't be 13. But now some girls even start 12, 11, or 10, or even earlier. So is that good? No. If you start too early, it means we said it's like you are in a woman's body, we, we all say it's like flower. If you flower early, of course, you get sort of a, you know, shrink early. So, and um, you cannot cannot last forever. And um, and then it's not it's not good to have a too early period. But but then people say, what's wrong with that? Why why have an early period? Well, this is not big issues. It's because nowadays, in my personal ex uh, experience, I think it's to do with a lot of uh, you know this problem with um, the 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 hormone uh, in our food and water. You know, because, you know, every woman, most, lots of women, especially in the city, uh, now they're in the world, taking contraception pills. When they're taking the pills and the pee and the urine get into the sort of, uh, you know, uh, sort, of kind of, sort of waste water and eventually being treated and uh, in the water plant, I'm back to the river, back to our sort of uh, site recycled. So, in fact, and the most of the sort of water treating uh, plants or whatever, they cannot really, really completely clear those hormones. They may able to clear bacteria or other chemicals, but not able to clear hormone entirely. So the lot of them get into our food chain and water. That's why many girls, many women, uh, become mature quite early because there are lot of hormones stimulate. And, um, and because this kind of hormone is make your body grow faster and things like that. So unfortunately, this is a sort of a worldwide issues, not only in, in you know in in here, it's everywhere. So that's why, I, in fact, the fertility problem is a major issue in the world. Of course, there's another other other issues because people, you know, and um, uh, used to be a lot of problem. Men, even women, have a problem with let's say men's menstrual problem, like period pain or irregular period. And uh, unfortunately, the the medicine that they got that they get normally is the hormone, so or the pills, in other words. So they make them uh, in in a way when they're young, they take too much and make things wrong. So that's a problem. And also, when the woman have a, a, a sort of a, a the stress nowadays, the work and the stress itself, uh, emotional and and distress. This, this is very much will affect. Uh, we call them in Chinese medicine the stress uh, very much affect liver. A liver is also very, very much affect this whole what we call the qi, the energy. So which is means the cycle regularity, and then and then if you imagine, you know, and if we sometimes we call a qi liver, you know, people have a list, you know, liver qi stagnation or blocked. When liver qi is like blocked, or in other words, when you have lots of emotional stress, you get angry or not happy. So you are you are your chemical inside, and uh, all your body become very much uh, acid in the blood. So you become actually tense. So therefore, and uh, and then you feel very tense inside, and uh, all that acid, you know, the body like they cannot you cannot conceive because if you blood too acid or you if your body secretion too acid, you can kill the sperm anywhere. So the sperm is because they're so tiny, so they can't penetrate, get into it, because your body, so a woman's body naturally killed them. So, and um, and uh, and they even make some tubes or uh, clothes that make everything more and more, more tense. So that's why. So all these problems, so what we do in Chinese medicine, then, obviously, you know, um, there are many of the, we so called, you know, in, in Western medicine, there is called IVF clinic. And the, all other way, they called IVF or gift, or whatever, the many different way of the sort of uh, assist fertility. But the one thing uh, they are not uh, good at, that they do more chemically, let's say, you know, if you do IVF, that's one to want to take the sperm, it takes eggs out, put 
externally first fertilized and hopefully put it back to your lady's body, they can survive. But this is a very, very low success rate. In the overall, in UK, some hospital maybe 20, 25% or 30% very good, but mostly lower than 20, even lower than 15. So average is about 18% successful rate. So in other words, if you think about, oh, 18 is not bad, but if you put it all the way around, if you say, if the, your treatment is 80, 83% or 80% fail rate, you think, oh, that's really bad. So therefore, that's why, you know, many ladies spend a fortune, try IVF, still get nowhere. So what do we do in Chinese medicine? So all these issues, some of the things we can't do, just what we say, if it's really mechanical to block the mended operation. But if it's not a mechanical problem, so we have this idea, number one, is make women, uh, you know, female system younger. In other words, more vit more more vitality, because we believe, you know, even though you you maybe you start feel very early or for something, so we can help you to help your body to get this this female hormone back to normal. So and uh, and that is in Chinese that we call the kidney. The kidney gene. So many women, you know, we we see they have a problem with the period. They're very tired. They they they're getting old quickly. The eyes become dark. All these things we said it to do with kidney weakness. So we have something to help the kidney with medicine with with something. And also, and also another issue is a lot of women nowadays because of the diet and also because they want to lose weight. A lot of them the eating control. So they don't have enough nutrients. So it become quite anemic, or the blood, we call it poor, poor blood. So that's, in fact, you know, even in a rich country like England or UK, and there are lots of people who have a problem. And, um, and I see my patient. So we have to nourish the blood. So not only think simply taking iron, people say, oh, let's, let's take some iron. Iron is one of the issues. It's not how much iron you're taking. In fact, this whole spectrum of the nutrients we need to replace. And, and more important, it's not simply the nutrients, it's help your body to absorb them, to sort of uh, eliminate them, to, to use them. So that's another thing. So you would call this the second is the blood. So I said kidney and the blood. Thirdly, in Chinese medicine, we call it liver. As I said early on, liver is the whole thing to regulate, including like women's breasts, women's you know, uterus, and everything. You know, lots of women have a period before period or during a period have a P PMT, have um, you know, their breasts become very tender, the body very tense. So all these things, and uh, they can affect fertility. You know, if you if you don't balance them, and uh, and then in the in this case in Chinese medicine, like acupuncture or some herbs are very good. So that's why, in fact, in many many fertility clinics in London, this IVF clinic. They do even employ some doctors or some people to use acupuncture service, uh, to acupuncture help the woman. And uh, personally, I have, I have many, many thousands of them. So make the the whole make the make the hormone better. So regulate the cycle of the period without using the pills. So that's the way of Chinese medicine, and and we try to help. And of course. There's another issue is because even you're pregnant, that's no means that's end of story. Because it is also very important. Can you holding on, holding down? You know, many women after that get miscarriage. Uh, can be early, can be late. This is very frustrating. And uh, and then this is the issues. So that's why in Chinese medicine, we have a lot of a uh, sort of uh, talking about, you know, how you prepare your body. Prepare women, particularly the uterus, make sure the uterus uh, are the, the lining getting thicker and good enough to to host uh, the baby. So and then and they can sort of um, fully sort of sustain these ten months of the pregnancy, and uh, and that's why, in fact, for the past you know. 20, 25 years. In fact, you know, we, we used to work in, in the Whittington Hospital for maternity clinic. We helped people, you know, if they're pregnant, have a problem with acupuncture. 
is quite good because then they can help them, you know, control, help the blood pressure, help the pain, help to reduce the, you know, edema or reduce the many things without using too much drugs. So this is a, um, the Chinese medicine we can do for this kind of problem. But of course, and uh, uh, we must, I must stress, you know, every case is individual. Every case is special. So we we don't have such a remedy. Well, hang on these tablets. It's magic. You can make 10 babies out of taking that tablets. There's no such things. And uh, and also, you know, we say this is a medicine or this is acupuncture need, need points. You can do that for every woman. No, we have to adjust, assess individually for their person, their background, for their history, for the period, for their bleeding and all these you know, information we need to know, and uh, to see how their body, for example, you know, what the tongue looks like, what the pulse feel like, and many things. So this is a, we have, I have to stress that. So I think this is, um, just give you some idea. So as I said, I, I, I will talk about 30 minutes. So now it's about 30 minutes. So, and uh, now it's time for some questions. Thank you. Thank you so much for that insightful talk, um, Professor Key. Um, I'd just like to invite our, our audience members to either um, raise their hand if they'd like to ask a question or put some questions in the Q&A that we can ask uh, Professor Key based on traditional Chinese medicine and uh, fertility. Anything that you've heard tonight that you'd like to know a little bit more about so I'll, I'll kick off with some questions whilst we're waiting for some of the audience to um, enter it in the chat there. So um, one of the questions is, um, do any lifestyle factors affect the effectiveness of traditional Chinese medicine for supporting fertility? So if we could ask that to begin yeah. with. The answer is simply yes, because many, uh, many many people suffer from infertility, as I said, ladies, is because they, in other words, their their body are not good enough. Uh, the system and say the blood deficiency or the kidney we call it weakness or liver stagnation. So the lifestyle is very important. For example, alcohol. If you consume too much alcohol for lady, is very damaging for liver. A liver damage is very bad for fertility. Is number one. And when you're young, you don't realize. But if you when you get it, when you want to try to get pregnant, it's difficult. And secondly, you know, and uh, the the blood. We say the blood we need to nourish, and not only need nourish. In fact, in Chinese medicine, that's one very important. Not only the woman, the blood need to be nourished, and also need to be warm. So because the, if, the, if the blood is too cold, they can't flow very well. They can easily con easy cause congestions, such as period of pain, clots, or even fibrous, or even endometriosis. So in this country, I personally find there's a lot of women have a problem. They, they don't keep it warm. And uh, you don't get a young lady, when you see, in the winter, you see them go out, have a sort of wear mini skirt, you know, in the cold. And the girls, very young age, they all go out very cold. Um, I think that's wrong. So when you have a, this the, too cold, especially in your lower part of the body, you know, and the whole uterus, that area, the blood is frozen. So when they're frozen, the blood can't flow very well. So, and then they will cause a lot of congestions. That's why, in fact, this is one of the reasons, one of the reasons why the endometriosis form, because of the cold. So in other words, we need to, educated people, especially the ladies, around the period of time. Keep it warm, eat warm, even drinking warm. You know, that's why many people find the Chinese women go to the restaurant. Always want to drink hot water. What do you mean drink hot water? Why not drink icy water? I say, yes, no icy water. It has to be hot. Okay. And what is the, the view of traditional Chinese medicine um, in terms of hereditary um, conditions? Because um, conditions that you've mentioned, for example, like endometriosis where it runs in the family is it that they're coming from um people who haven't kept their their lower part of their body um well, warm as you say or what's the sort well, of well, this is a, yeah i mean any illness there are always inherited issues that like you are who you are okay so 
you can't change your genetic genes. But I don't think there's every problem are genetically uh, caused, like as you mentioned, endometriosis. This is what we never say. This is caused by the you know, genetic issues. Is how your system. It could be, but in my it's more to do with how your how your lifestyle. So therefore, yes, if you have a family history of you know this period of pain or something, that's that's because many women have a period of pain. It's because of the naturally the the womb the shape have a little problem. So that's like if your mother have a narrow kind of sort of things, and then you become narrow. So this is this is genetic. But as far as the blood concern, is how your body look up the body, how it eat. So therefore, and of course, we if, if, if it's a genetic issue, that's why we need to know the history, the background, family history, and personal history. But overall, yes, there are some kind of sort of uh, family issues, but mainly it's down to yourself. Thank you. And you've um, focused mainly on um, um, uh, females um, in this webinar. Um, I wondered if you could say, give a give a brief case study of where you've treated a, a, a male patient and what some of the possible issues um, may be for, for male infertility and how that has been treated in your, your practice. Okay. Let me just simply to tell you. For example, nowadays, I said that 25% of the males have a problem with the sperm, the quality or quantity. So we need, you know, and nowadays the sperm quantity and quality all descending, come down, compared with 20, 40, 50 years ago. So because all this lifestyle of food and diet. So I have been treating many people. For example, I have a, I have a, I have a gentleman who come to me, you know, uh, he has he's from, from Birmingham, he tried. The doctor said, oh, your sperm is bad. You know, you know the motility, the number of sperm, everything's wrong. And they, they don't know what to do. And... Um, I said, well, in Chinese medicine, this is another issue. For male, we have similar issues. We have a kidney, we have a leash, we have some, you know, the, the blood issues, a, a water issues, a particularly kidney and water. So if even men, and particularly those men, if if, if their lifestyle is bad, drink too much in the past, their, their body sometimes is what we call overheated. When the body overheated, so that the overheat, there's, there's kind of a hot body. You, need, you see some men even in the winter that they, they don't feel cold. I mean, this is a, this that they're strong man. But on the other hand, some people is overheating. So the overheating can cause can cause problem with sperm. So when when one changes medicine, we try to reduce the heat, and the sperm can develop better, better quality, better quantity. I see. So it's quite a contrast there, isn't it? When you think about the male and the female. In the woman, it's if it's if there's heat, there's heat. But in the male, it's it's uh, the opposite. That's right, Chinese called yin and yang. Yang, yes. <laughs> it's a yang means fire, woman means yin, new yes. and it's cold water. So it's completely different issues. Yeah, yeah, got you. Okay, so question here: Can Chinese medicine help with premature ovarian insufficiency if egg count is low and periods are irregular? Yeah, this is yes. Definitely, this is one of the conditions we're treating a lot. Because you know, when, when you say your egg count is low, why egg is low? Because you are you are we call it the eggs, it's like you are essence of your body, you know. So your essence is not strong enough, not good enough. So what we want you to do, we need strength kidney. We change the medicine, we say help the kidneys, make them better. So therefore they produce better eggs and more eggs. Of course, everybody, you know, every lady, you know that in a lifetime, you only have a number of eggs in your sort of reserve. But sometimes, if your body is not good enough, eggs become very easily wasted. They become not mature and then they're wasted. So we need to make sure all the reserve you have are properly nourished, properly developed, and properly matured. Okay, thank you. I hope that answers your question there for um, that question and in your experience then professor have you seen shrinkage in fibroids um that have happened as a result of uh, chinese medicine and acupuncture yeah fibroid is one of the common issues in fact you know if you if you, if you go to the street take let's say 100 women around let's say 30 40 this years old you check them uterus you know just randomly you find that maybe even 30 to 50% of them have fibroids. So it's not big issues. 
have a little lump, just like your your skin, your face have grown a little lump, little, little spots. It's nothing too bad. It's nothing too big issue. But the issues, it becomes them too big. And particularly if the fibers, they grow inward, you know, because like say, if you if you see that like uterus, it's like little, 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 little hole, little, little, little thing. If they grow out outwards, it's not a big issue. If they grow inward, particularly in the occupied room, so there can be problem. So of course, doctor will say, oh, you need operation. Sure, that's the right way of answer. But do you really need operation? Do you, can you try something before that? I think it's worthwhile to try. Because if there's a way of getting fibroids, and there's always the way to reduce fibroids. You know, just like your body, the skin on the face, you have a spot. You don't need to use surgery to cut off, remove every spot, don't you? You leave them, after a little while, they're gone. Where they're gone, gone nowhere. So same, we have been treating, I've been personally treating quite a few people who have fibroids. So, and then they can shrink, they can reduce. And it's not it's not impossible, but, you know, we need us. This is how we are, the Chinese medicine treating the problem. I see. Thank you. That's useful to hear. And another question that we have here, what can we do for ourselves at home to nourish the blood? So if it's in, um, in, in, um, conjunction with traditional Chinese medicine and, you know, some of the, the, the treatments, what can people do at home to nourish the blood and improve vitality? That's a good question. Now, obviously, first of all, you know, even though we are supposedly so-called a rich country in the world, in the lifestyle or the every person the, should have enough food, but it's not how much you eat, it's the, it's the quality of the food. So, and the number one, we, there's so much, so many junk food and, uh, you know, around, you know, and people, some right, yeah, it's not too much sugar, you know, and uh, too much, you know, this fried food and also too much alcohol, as I said. And all these things, you know, in a small amount, it's okay, no problem. You know, I even myself drink alcohol, eat some sugar sometimes. That's, we, um, we are not, not the same, so we just have to live in a normal life. But on that hand, we have to be reasonable, you know. And uh, if you're a lady, you know, over 25, 30, you think you're, you're in the next few years, you're going to have a baby. So please don't drink too much, you know, or stop drinking. Give your body a chance, you know. Don't wait until you try, oh, I can't have a baby. And then the, I try so many times, you know, I fail every time. You have to be, say, be be wise to be earlier to prepare your body. Same as the food. So therefore, definitely eat a lot of what we call them, you know, meat, good, fish are good, all these sort of, uh, you know, vegetables, and particularly the dark green vegetables, they're good, and uh, just normal amount of starch, fine. So all these foods, not in Pacific, but you need to be healthy. And uh, not eat too much junk food and too much alcohol, and also eat them warm for ladies, especially women. You know, especially in the winter now we're getting winter season, so eat everything warm. You know, and uh, and particularly when your period coming around that cycle time, you need to keep warm, eating warm, and drinking warm. I see. Okay. Well, that's uh, hopefully answered your question there. Um, in terms of what you can do to nourish your blood. Another uh, question that we have is on average, what is the length of acupuncture treatment? For, so if somebody is trying to conceive, what would be the, acu what would be the sort of average length um, of treatment that they would have prior to um, any, any trying to conceive or whilst during okay. trying to conceive? Okay. If, 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 it is, if it's a day to have a problem, we I know a problem, like say endometriosis, fibrous or something. So that's different. It needs slightly longer time treating those condition. Okay. If a woman, nothing wrong, just simply regular period, not regular, nothing wrong. Um, and then maybe we, what was say, I would have so-called prepare the body first before you conceive. So normally I ask them, come, they come to me, let's say three to six months prior, you try to conceive. So three to six months prior, you try to conceive. So I will prepare your body. So get your body, you know, blood better, warm enough, flowing better, get your energy better. In other words, get your eggs better. So reduce your acidity in the blood, everything. So these things with a three to six months to 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 prepare. Yeah, and I imagine it will be different depending on what stage they were in in treatment. For example, if somebody was having 
uh, IVF or, or assisted um, conception, or if they were having a frozen embryo transfer, it would be dependent on what treatment they were having, or would it still be three to six months? No, that's another, that's another issue. So if some people also in the same time to receive the IVF treatment, as for example, so we, that's, that's another my, uh, my skills well. This is not written in old Chinese medicine because the old Chinese medicine has no such IVF, okay? So there's a new things. So what do we do? So for all these years, observe a study, we see how how the how how the women re react to the IVF. For example, if you pump lots of hormone, the body feels totally, you know, it sort of feel bad. So in a way, we are um we using so if, if that's doing the this that then was in the process. So they will tell me where are they? So they are in the prepared or, take, or taking the eggs or put it back into the body at a different stage. So I would do different things. So in the prepare, in the preparation them, we need to get the system to be nourished, strong. If we're taking eggs that time, so we need to start to make sure the body calm, not reject. After put, put it into the body, we try to consolidate, to stabilize, so make sure the body is not rejected. Yeah, so that makes absolute sense there. Um, another question that's just, just come in, and um, we'll be closing questions shortly. So if you have a burning question, please do uh, submit it in the chat um, or the Q&As, and then we will um, try to get to you before we close. So for instance, if, a, if, a, if someone was to have a large fibroid, so say we're talking about six to seven centimeters yeah. with treatment with traditional chinese medicine treatment it would you say there is a, a sort of duration of time with, that you'd expect to see sh shrinkage of that fibroid after having treatment well this is this is another issue how to treating fibros yes six seven centimeters it is quite a big but not that big i would see somebody maybe 30 40 centimeters big ones so so therefore and um you know, of course, we, I told you, we have to see where the fibers are located, whether to like protruding outwards or inwards or in between the muscles. So that's different. But even then, they still, you know, have plenty of the cases in the, in the past, you know, even not me or many other doctors, you know, has managed to shrink them. You know, this is one of the issues. I want to talk this. Many doctors initially don't accept or challenge medicine. How can you treat infertility? What is evidence you have? You know, what is scientific evidence? Um, yes, though I don't have personally a lot of scientific evidence. Although there are many hospitals, many, many data, you can collect them, you can you can see, you can Google them. There are many hospitals, even China would do lots of. But in, in overall, there's there's still not really hard, hard evidence to say this is very good. Well, exactly, because Chinese medicine, we don't do like these sort of things as a as a, like say you have a one viral killing you that's it no because the fire the, the the infertility is a complicated issues even mental issues okay so therefore we don't have such but but overall when you look at as as a big picture we got we got a big numbers you know for the past thousand years Chinese medicine has been look after Chinese people's you know the birth the life a long time and that's why china was the biggest country in, in terms of population in the world only lately the indian catch up because china was having this 30 40 years policy one child policy so restricts birth but otherwise so chinese fertility people are quite good from from many hundred thousand years ago to now so this is all done by chinese medicine so i said would that be good enough to figure the evidence you know, I, if any 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 common sense, we will we'll say that's that's true. You know, and if if, if our medicine is not working, people's health won't be good, fertility won't be good. You know, because long two hundred years ago, Western medicine never get into China. So all these things done by Chinese medicine, sort of a sort of a the Chinese people's health, look after the woman. So in fact, that's what I. When I teach you lecture to many people, we say Chinese medicine in, in UK or in the West, there are three major things that we are very successful. One is skin conditions. You know, eczema, psoriasis, we're doing very well. Secondly, is the pain control. That's why we use acupuncture of the pain clinic. All the pain, back pain, joint pain, headaches. 
thirdly is you know is all these gynecological conditions including fertility or infertility thank you very much well you know it sounds like having that holistic approach you know in terms of treating infertility is 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 what is um stands out in Chinese uh, traditional Chinese medicine, which can differ from Western medicine, so there may be many people who prefer that approach, and as you say, um, are aware of the, the the benefits of that. Of course, Chinese medicine treating fertility for women actually actually nothing can lose. We're not pumping our lots of hormone, pumping in lots of hormone to you. You know, you change your system. No, in fact, we are getting getting body stronger. Whether you're pregnant or not, it will help you anywhere. So make your body look younger. Make your we call them make your gene, make kidney better, make your blood better, and your skin will naturally get better, your hair better, your your mood will better. And that's what why not? Obviously, more ultimately will increasing the possibility for you to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so um coming to the last question. So I've got a question here um from someone who is due to be starting their second round of IVF next month. Um, do you think there's any foods or any particular things that they can do to help this cycle to be successful? Well, obviously, I have first of all said good luck for the, for, 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 the, you know, for the for the for the lady. I hope she's successful this time. You know, I've been coming across many people even tried it ten times, all failed. So when they come to me, and you know, I said it is because your body not prepared. You know, doesn't how many times. Just like say, if you if you tire the horse, you got to run it. Have a have a in a horse race. You never win, so so we need to get everybody strong. So so yes, and uh, obviously I can't give you really detailed advice for this lady. I mean, but you should follow what I said before. You know, healthy food, healthy living style, keep warm, and uh, not too much alcohol to start with. Okay, thank you. And then there'll be many people who have seen uh, traditional Chinese medicine and um, acupuncture uh, services on the high street. You know, many people will be familiar with that. What do you think about the effectiveness of, of those um, sort of setups and the practitioners who practice on, on the high street? Is there anything to be aware of and to avoid? Well, this is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good question. And I used to be the president of Chinese Medicine Association here, whatever. So I, I do know the background of practitioners in 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 the UK or in Europe. So um, they are so called qualified, but qualified means you take a little course, some course to do something and to study. But that's not means you are expert in this area. So and also particularly even some Chinese people, you may they may look like Chinese face, but they're, they're not they're not necessarily know very much Chinese medicine. You know, as I say, I'm an I'm I'm a doctor teacher here. I teach many Chinese people as well as Western people. I used to teach in Chinese university. So it's not say, you know, every the corner shop, they are, you know, um they are they're they are, they are all expert in, in this area. I mean they may be good in something, but I don't know. So you that's why, you know, because in this country we are really have not really have any you know, statutory legislation about this sort of a whole practice. So we don't know. Even the Western doctors, same, you know, there's a good doctor, so not no not 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 so good doctors. Okay. Same as a lawyer. So you always have to, you know, play by ear, see how lucky you are, you find one. So normally, you know, for example, in, in our clinic. Asante, we've been here more than 20, 25 years now. So practice, we work with hospitals. So we, 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 we hardly advertising. You know, maybe if many, many of the people who might, might talk today, you probably never heard Asante before, but because we didn't advertise. So, but now you check our website, you will see we've done lots of work in this area. We are very, in our profession. So therefore, you need, you need, you need good luck, do research, find good ones. And, and, and of course, and then finally, you want to know more about Chinese medicine. In fact, I lately I try to help you know people on people on understand. I do a little bit of YouTube kind of sort of talks. So if you wish, just Google or YouTube my name and uh, and or Chinese medicine. They may come out some program. Just listen. So that'll be that'll be very helpful.
Yeah, absolutely. And we can share any links um, to some of the YouTube um, talks as well um, that you've done. That would be really great for um, the people that are, are interested in finding more. Very good. About okay. it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really delighted to have had you and your expertise to share with our attendees. They will be able to view this again if there's anything they want to go over or have any further questions and um, can have a look at um, your services and what you offer at the Academy too. So I just want to close by telling um, everyone that Please don't forget that we are your charity and we are here for you. If you need support, we have groups across the country and some UK wide groups. And you can contact me, the Facility Network UK Ethnic Minorities Community Project Worker. We also have a support line and information lines are open every weekday. So please do not hesitate to get in touch and we will help you. Um, thank you all for joining us. What a massive big thank you again to Professor Key for being a joining us tonight and um, wish you well with your evening. Please remember that the views that have been shared are those of traditional Chinese medicine. And so you, you obviously have to do your own research and um, do what you feel suits you on your fertility journey. But we hope that you've been able to hear from uh, um, a, a, an expert in the field sharing about the approaches to supporting fertility using traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.